a big uh, component of this film is obviously the villain. And when we had Dean Devlin yeah. on earlier this year, I, I, or I guess earlier in this season, last, last year, I didn't realize that Ra was completely, that he was never supposed to be Ra until the end, until the um, post-production where they were like, okay, the performance, we need, we need to, in, we need to take this up a notch. Let's give him a flange and, and let's make his eyes glow. Let's make him Ra rather than. He was he, he. Well, he wasn't an alien until like 10 minutes before the film came <laughs> Right. You know, so uh, a big par portion of, of his theme is that choir. I mean, t tell us about bringing that it together. Is, but I think, I think, I think, I think there's two things that work with that, with Ra. One is the portentousness of that chant, you know, because it kind of harks back to, um, you know, sort of pre-science, which is, you know, a lot of the time, uh, you know, at the time when Ra was around, uh, although there was science around, the Egyptians were certainly like at the forefront of a lot of it. Um, you know, for most people, they were still, you know, wondered if if there was a, a thunderstorm, whether God was annoyed with them. Mm. Um, so there is that, um, uh, the, you know, the, 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 uh, the sort of organized, religion choral thing uh of human beings in a way giving you a warning that's what i wanted it to feel like mm -hmm. you know it's like he's coming and you better be on your best behavior you know in fact you'd be best to get out of the way or whatever it is he's coming right so you had that which is the the grand aspect of it and when you look at the entrance you know, I mean, it's so theatrical. Uh, it's so, it is so grand uh, that you can't ignore the scale and the size of it. But for me, the real heart of it, the truth of it, was that horrible, mewling, greasy violin thing, which just made you kind of, you know, like, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it was it's like something on edge. so sneaky and awful. Yeah, it's horrible that was the real danger you know the rest of it is showmanship but it's like when he gets close to you and you realize well he's not a physical threat in terms of his size he's not like a giant monster you know sometimes you get these things now and it's like you know got um, massive horns or you know big eyes and and cgi kind of creature you know it's a very slight young man uh but he can do all this stuff and it's what he represents and it's what he represents that's terrifying and what he represents is psychological really more than anything and when they get to the movie you know and they're moving towards the end and they realize that he has to be a bit more than that i suppose maybe because of the genre maybe they felt that the character as itself wasn't landing in a way that was a big enough villain maybe uh then you know then his eyes glowed and he does i mean he was doing these horrible things as well correct before he had power. um but he was never revealed he was yeah. never revealed it, he was like imbibed with a power uh and it's like the way that i felt about it was that like young ra you know spent his whole life being told what to do probably in the, in his duty you know by elders you know by the people who would be striding alongside him and behind him um and for the first time now he's got power and um, he, he's thinking of damaging people because he can, you know. Yeah. Uh, and or at least with this ship horribly, and with this planet, these are his domain, it, and he's going to take full advantage of it. Yeah, yeah. So it's um, it's uh, it, it's dictatorship, you know. It's it's North Korea in space. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, the, the the choices that you made in a, in a couple of these uh, sections, particularly with with the violin, like you were saying, with those streaks, um, one of the more like I guess like how do I want to put it um, uh, on the edge of your seat, like biting nails moment is in the labyrinth under the pyramid. You know when they're being hunted, the the men are being hunted by the what would later become you know the mm. Jaffa, not really Jaffa, but the uh, the soldiers. And you're you're keeping it. Yeah. You're instead of like going overblown and you, you know you're playing with the percussion and you're just you're you're 
you're winding up the audience, which is one of, I think probably one of my favorite scenes out of the movie because we're all just starting to freak yeah. out. Like as any moment, all these guys are going down and it's just one after the other. I mean, it was still pretty big, you know, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't shy. Um, that's true but i'm also aware i'm also aware that this score and this film is operating at quite a high volume even when it's quiet <laughs> you know true. it's like to, uh, the, to the and, scale and, of everything else i mean then <laughs> yeah uh, but i suppose relatively it was subdued uh <laughs> but i also knew what was coming up that's so true. you can't when you've got something which is a little more internal and tense you can't be going like balls out because otherwise where do you go when you've got these other monstrous enormous things start happening when you have six thousand people running down a hill oh my god then you've got to have somewhere to go you yeah. know so um Musically. so you have to have to say save some of it yeah exactly yeah <laughs> that's fair the uh th the success of the film surprised you did it blow you away i know dean was blown um away. I think everyone was pleasantly surprised. Uh, I really liked it. And I really liked what I did for it. And for me, that's the only success that I can hope for because that's the only thing I've got any control over. The only thing I can control is, is am I doing something that I like with people that I like? Right. And have I managed to do the job that I wanted to do? And I think the answer to all those was yes. So I went home. I was exhausted, uh, and but but happy with what we did. Um, Dean had the disadvantage of not knowing what he was going to hear. You know, I'd played him. This was a day, but you know, this was a time before you had samples and everything. You know, it was quite early days. Uh, so I mocked up a few things for Dean to hear, like the main theme, uh, the 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 Ra march the um the scene with kurt russell uh in his bedroom mm -hmm. at the start of the movie before he gets visited with a picture of his son you know those things i think are important because if we don't get those bits right mm -hmm. you can be jumping up and down and making loads of noise as much as you like but if the things that matter to the cast you know right. to the character you don't represent them then you know you're lost and you're you're basically ignoring a big part of why he does the things that he does uh so you, you know so those i think i played him like those three things and that was about it roland i don't think heard much at all uh and wow i expected them to be right to the, by your side we, this is surprising to hear yeah well you know what? there's a lot going on in post-production okay. thanks for watching this clip from dial the gate you can find the full live stream shows on our youtube channel or visit dialthegate.com for the complete schedule see you on the other side <laughs>